Okay. What in the world? Um. Hmm. It says I'm live, but I'm seeing a dark screen, y'all. Um, I'll retry this. I don't know what's going on with my webcam. It's not showing anything. Okay. Hmm. All right. My phone shows that you guys can see me, but on my screen, it's black. We'll try this. I hope y'all can hear me. Um, anyway. All right. Our, um, devotional for today is I am your great provider. Lean into my promise of remains true. You will see my hands open to you, full of everything you need. Look only to me as your great supply and your great reward. I will bring my glory over all your disappointment and break your limitations as you look to me. Never doubt in the dark what I have revealed to you in the light. For my promises endure, and I have never failed to show you my love. Nourish your heart in my promises and laugh at your impossibilities. And the miracles will be birth in your heart. Watch what I will do when you fill your heart with promise or with praises. Stones will praise me. Will you praise me even before you see the miracle manifest? I will work where you have given up hope. From the dark chaos, I will bring forth beauty, abundant life, and radiant light. Even this day, you will see the beginning of all I have planned for you when you look to me and to me alone. Um, and our verse today um, is God wanted to end all doubt and confirm it even more forcefully to those who would inherit his promises. His purpose has unchangeable, sorry, his purpose was unchangeable. So God added his vow to the promise. So it is impossible for God to lie for we know that his promise and his vow will never change Hebrews chapter 6 verses 17 and 18 alright hey sis how are you can you hear me and can you see me is on my Chromebook I don't see anything I can see the chat and on my phone, I can actually see me, but I've got it turned, the volume turned off, so I don't have an echo. Hi, Tank. Welcome in. Okay. Audio is good. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you, sis. All right. I don't know what's going on with my Chromebook. It's weird. I've got a blank screen. Or it's just black. And I can see the chat. But as far as what I can see here, nothing. Just black screen and that's it. All right. First of all, I won um, a, pro a giveaway from Regina from Marsh Knitting 101. Um, it was her March giveaway. And I've had it since Monday last week. And I can't believe I've let it sit for a whole week without me... <laughs> um, 
opening it. I just did open it before the live, so I don't have all the crinkling going on. I will have a little bit of crinkling because it's still in the bag. Um, okay, how is Little Man today? Uh, he's doing better. He's had two full days of antibiotics. Um, he's coughing a lot, but I think it's because he's got a tickle going on with his strep throat. But he's actually eating solids now. Um, that first day on Saturday, um, I knew something was wrong when he didn't finish eating his mac and cheese for lunch. Um, he does that child does not miss eating out on mac and cheese. Uh, so we knew something was wrong when he didn't finish his mac and cheese for lunch. Uh, let's see, we got we got Lydia came in. Hi, Lydia. Oh, hey, Maritza. Welcome in. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, we've been, it's been an interesting few days, <laughs> um, which one thing I'm excited about is, um, we had somebody in a church, in our church, give us some money to get a new, um, refrigerator because we, our refrigerator, when we lose power here, it doesn't keep things cold for very long. And so if it's out for a full day and stuff, I can't move the refrigerator because it's so big and heavy. My husband it was having to leave work and have to come home and hook everything up to the generator and stuff. Um, but he's been wanting a garage, um, garage ready refrigerator because it's more insulated and our house is not temperature controlled. So anyway, somebody gave us a $300 gift card at our church to get a, to go towards a new refrigerator. We finally found one that we liked and um, got it on Friday. Uh, actually our pastor picked it up for us and we, you know, we paid the difference because it was a little more than three, well, more than $300, but it was affordable for us because we got our tax return. Um, so we paid the difference extra of the, over the 300. Um, but because it was turned over on its side, we got it Saturday. It had to sit upright for 24 hours and then we had to have it plugged in for 24 hours to make sure that it's working after it sat for 24 hours. So this evening, when my husband got home, we moved refrigerators around and then transferred all the stuff from the old refrigerator to the new one. So we got that all working and, and I'm excited because we got a new refrigerator um, and Hopefully, with it being a better insulation, we won't have to worry about him getting off work early and coming to have to hook up the generator for it. So, we're excited about that. <laughs> yeah. Yay. <laughs> Extremely excited. Um, Y'all just don't know. <laughs> um, we've lost food we're in a mountain area and power goes out easily out here uh especially when we got a lot of wind so it's it's a battle where we're at so without a further ado let's see what we got in here from regina oh ho, ho, ho. miss kitty might take this from me there is a bunch of stickers. Miss Kitty likes stickers. Look at there. I got a bunch of stickers. <laughs> Miss Kitty likes stickers. She might end up with those. I, I doubt that I'll get to keep those. <laughs> and she's with Grandma right now. Um, oh, and there's some more stickers. In here. And let's see. 
Give me a little zipper pouch here. We got crochet hook. Stitched with love tag. Little tag you can sew on. It's a stitched with love. And there's some other little tags in here that you can sew on projects. This one says handmade. And another one that says it's handmade. A little black one like that. And, ooh, I got some Earl Grey. I may have to watch that one. My husband likes Earl Grey tea. Well, okay. Can't get back in there. Thank you card. Handmade with love. Thank you card. There's some other stickers in here. Some bear stickers. I like these. They're cute. I got some bear stickers. She can't, Miss Kitty can't take these from me. There's a penguin. He's cute. That was mine. That'll program on my Chromebook with my other collection of stickers. I got a bunch of them on the back of my Chromebook. And then you got the sun. Put them back in there. Try to get these little tags back in there. So I don't lose those. Oh, I has got that tea down in this bag. Probably out of determination. But <laughs> I'm not going to work on trying to get that. That's going to cause a lot of noise. But I always use these. These are very handy. I lose them. They, fall, fall, they fall out of projects or I set it down and it falls down in my couch and then I can't find it. So these are great. I love these kind of hooks. <laughs> Whoop. Tape sticking to me. All right. Let's see. Where are the good stuff in here? <laughs> we got yarn. Oh, there's another little thing in here. Got yarn. Whoop, whoop. There's buttons down in here. There's um, a ladybug, butterfly, ant, a fly, a caterpillar, and a bee. Those are cute. I see we got some people hopping in on me here. Let me see my chat. I can't read this one, so let me pick up my phone, see who's coming in that I missed. Let's see. Roseanne, hi, welcome in. Um, Smithy, welcome in. I'm doing good, Lydia. Um, how are you? All right, we have Katerina. Golden Gate Sunset. Yarn Bee. Isn't that pretty, y'all? Look at all them colors. Them spring colors. Yeah, isn't that pretty? And this one's Katerina. Uh, Regal Rose. That one's, oh, Miss Kitty would like that one. She's really going to like that one. That one's real pretty. Really soft. Ooh, these are soft. 259 yards. They're really soft. Thank you, Regina. This is nice. Miss Kitty's really going to like that one. She might steal that one for me. Or actually make me make her something out of that. Because she don't crochet. <laughs> so she'll probably say, make me something out of it, please. Because it's extremely soft. That is like scarf, scarf yarn. <laughs> it is really, really soft. Let's see. I know, dealing with a toothache and a headache. Well, I hope you get to feeling better, Lydia. A toothache and a headache together, that ain't no fun. 
Socks? Yeah, right. You do the socks, sis. I ain't doing socks. <laughs> she, uh, let's see. I got her a knit, little small knitting machine thing from Walmart. If it was for Christmas or something like that. It might have been for her birthday. She tried it, but it was a little cheap thing. Um, she got one thing out of it, and we tried doing something else with it, and it just kept, I don't know, kept dropping stitches. Um, uh, but she got one thing made out of it, and it looks like it would be about the size of a sock for her. Um, but she calls it a tail warmer for Bandit, and Bandit will not hold still for it. <laughs> she will things off <laughs> uh, you've made some using knitting looms okay um yeah ariana or miss kitty sorry she won't um i don't know she wouldn't try to make another sock to match it um for herself i guess she just got bored with it man she does like the loop yarn um she's got part of a blanket made she quit working on hers and she's working on one for a friend so what she did with that one that she made on the knitting you know it's a little knitting machine thing kind of like a knitting machine knitting loom but anyway where it's gone to. I have no idea. But yeah. She tried putting it on Bandit. And Bandit just said no. I ain't sticking around for that. She took off running. And then went and hid from her. She's like oh come on Bandit. Come back here. Mm -mm. She said no no. She hid. She said oh no, you got that in your hand. She wouldn't come out. She had to put that sock, that sock down. Before, before she come out. And, tell, uh, and see her again. <laughs> So, but anyway, I know it's been a while since I showed y'all the blanket that I started um, back in January. Um, it's a project that Seta and I are working on together. Um, I had gotten some yarn from a little consignment shop. And it had like a bunch of little scrap stuff in it. And down in there was three granny squares that was already pre-made. And so what Seta and I are doing, I kept one of them for me and gave two to her. One she's adding on to that she's going to complete. And the other one is if she travels and goes and visits around because um, she does do a lot of traveling, and if she sees any other YouTubers or even just friends of hers that does crochet, because um, sometimes she does meet up with some of her subscribers uh, that are not YouTubers, just subscribers and supporters of her channel, um, if she's in that area, that she does a meet up with them. Anyway, um, I, what I asked is if she would... Uh, when she travels is to take that with her and let other people that she meets up with if they would add on to it and it don't have to be because it's the traditional granny square pattern stitch um, so it don't have to be that they just they can add any kind of stitch to it um, and any color of yarn that they want to do, they can put their favorite stitch that they want to add to it or whatever um, and, and just add to it and make it bigger. But by the time we get these big enough to and finished is that there's a um, local place mission group here. Uh, and it's my pastor passes their... Um, home bay you know office um and what it is is it's campers care 
And what they do is they go to places that have had natural disasters and they provide um, campers for these people for a temporary home until they can get a home set up for themselves. Um, and sometimes if they get enough money, they can get a brand new one, even if it's like a small one for just a one person um, or bigger ones for families. Um, but anyway, it's for places that the people, the houses got flooded out and they lost their home completely and they have nothing um, tornadoes, any kind of stuff like that, natural disasters where their home is completely gone and they don't have anywhere to stay. And instead of staying in a hotel and stuff, they provide these families with a camper. And some people actually donate old campers to them. And if they need to do work on it, they do get money donations and they restore those up to where they're livable um, in this area. So there's been, and it, they've been like to Tennessee, they've been to other States, but they're local here. Um, but I wanted to, I asked Seta if she'd be willing to do this is that, um, we make these blankets and we donate it to that um, camper's care as a prayer blanket to go with that camper for whatever family they give that camper to. So we'll have three um, three blankets done for, for to donate to them. And I even messaged her one day and I said, well, I, when we get them finished and get them big enough to donate... I wanted to meet up with her and us together pray over them and then give them to the pastor so he can take it to the guy that that runs that uh, mission. And um, and it because it is a Christian based um, ministry, uh, they witness to people and stuff like that. So it's a wonderful ministry. In our church last year, our VBS, um, all the money that we collected from Vacation Bible School that last year um, went to their missionary um, missions group thing. So, but I just thought this would be a good way to to help them out too. That. Because if they've lost everything, th this will be a warm blanket for them to have. If you know, but anyway, the original part of it is this square right here. And the last time I showed it, I only added this blue and this purple. And that was the first two rows in January. Since then, this is the rest of January up to here. This purple is the, I did half and half on this row. I did half purple and then I did half for this brown and blue color because that week was a, um, it, it shared with February and and. In January so I did a half and half and then from where this is you got half of Jan you know the first half of week of February up to this blue right here which is a um, the last week of February and this purple back here you can kind of see it it is, um, shoot, <laughs> it's the first week of March. I've still got two or three weeks to go <laughs> left on there, and we're on the last week of March already, so I got a little bit of catching up to do, <laughs> so, but that's the collab with Seta 
on Seta's place. If you have not seen hers, she did show um, her progress on it a few videos ago. Um, and I think hers is actually bigger than what I've got so far. She thought that I was farther ahead than she is, but I think she's got me beat right now. I'm a little behind. <laughs> um, uh, project that I've been working on, I worked on this yesterday when his little man was sick. He didn't get to he was still considered contagious yesterday, so he didn't get to go to church yesterday. Uh, so he and I stayed home, and I got to listen to the church service on um, on the phone. Because um, our pastor does do our service on... I'll grab one of the stitch markers here. Off of this now that I've showed you, so I can show you this. I don't lose that handle on that hook is a little bit heavy. So that was a hook that my husband got. One of his co-workers, he does ink pens and he does a little bit with resin and he works with woodwork and stuff too, but he put some handles for me like our anniversary gift he got me a whole set of uh hooks and that's one of the hooks that he put the handle and that's kind of a little heavy there so <laughs> i wanted to take it out so it didn't fall on the floor but this is some yarn that i had gotten from goodwill a while back and this is, it's kind of wide. Uh, it's getting longer this way, but not so much this way. But this is a bod or bag o day crochet um, pattern. After, uh, after the live, I will try to put it in the description box. It don't have a name to it. So I really couldn't tell you what the name of this pattern is. I didn't, at least I didn't see one on there. So, but that's what I've got started. I got a lot of that done yesterday. And huh, this one, I was so disappointed in this. I got so far in this and I had to stop that I had showed y'all some of my, um, yarn haul from mine and Miss Kitty's Girls Day Out shopping trip that I had gotten at Hobby Lobby for. And I told y'all it was going to be a baby dress. And uh, here's the start of it. And I got this close to being done. I'm almost done with the pineapples. And I ran out of yarn. That's because I'm double stranding it. One of them stopped there and the other one's still going. So anyway, that's about as far as I got <laughs> with it. Um, I've got one, two, one, two, three, three loops on the bottom of the pineapple. And I still got to go to the point. So, and I think I got a few more rows to go. And I ran out of yarn. Um, but I did message the pastor's wife. She works in the town that um, I got this from. Where she is not very far from Hobby Lobby. She's, I don't even think, two minutes away maybe from it. So... This is a pineapple. Uh, it's got the pineapple stitch down here at the bottom of it. I don't know if y'all can see that or not. But it's got the little pineapple stitch down here at the bottom. Um, but this is for one of my nieces when I get it done. It says it's for a two to or one to two year old 
but I think that looks pretty big for a one to two year old. But I will get her another little dress, you know, just like a paint, a plain dress to go underneath it because of how see-through that is. But just a solid color dress. But I will show y'all when I get it done. I got so aggravated because I got that close to getting it done. Like I said, I'm doing two strands and this is a 10. Because it's a 10 weight. It was supposed to be a 3 weight. And I could not find a yellow in a 3 weight. I even looked online and I couldn't find on Amazon a yellow in a 3 weight. So, I just doubled up a, a 10. And this is called Gold Dust from Hobby Lobby. So, hopefully I'll be getting it soon. As I said, she goes up there every week so she can easily go and get it from, from there. So, and then the other one that I'm going to make is not, I got the cream color and a pink yarn. Um, it's not going to be the pineapple stitch dress it's going to be a different one it's going to have pink stripes and it's by the same lady i'll try to put that one in the description box as well um the lady that did those uh dresses the baby dresses um excuse me um she usually does doilies um uh, but she had a friend that was a gonna be a grandmother or a great grandmother or something like that and anyway she had this idea of doing that dress and uh, she went ahead and did the tutorial so that maybe you know that lady could make one for her granddaughter but it ended up being that she had a grandson <laughs> instead of a granddaughter, but she's like, oh, well, maybe down the year later on, she might have a granddaughter and she could do a, do it to, you know, do a dress for her. But she's like, I just had this idea for us, for these dress, this dress. And I just thought it was, it was beautiful dress. So I wanted to do it for one of my sisters for her baby. So, um, and then the other sister, my three younger sisters had each, all three of them had babies last year. So, um, they kind of stair-stepped last year <laughs> with, uh, it was funny, it's funny too, because it was in reverse. It was the youngest and the, the next one up, but then the next one up. And so, you know, <laughs> so. I thought it was kind of funny because the youngest one had hers first and then up to the one just underneath me who's three years younger um, than me. She had her third uh, child, but there was two, two girls, one boy. Um, I don't know. I don't, I might maybe, maybe, um, make a sun bunny for the little boy um because i don't know what else to make him um car as far as clothing um so and he's growing so fast that by the time i get it made if i and get it sent out to him he'd probably outgrow it so I'll probably do a some money for him. And let's see. Let Papa done message me. Hold on, y'all, through Messenger. He might be checking on little man. I don't know. He sent me some video. Okay. Yeah, well, I've got a blanket for him already. I just got to get it sent out. Says, <laughs> I keep forgetting to send it. <laughs> it's done. This is in there. I haven't got it. I need to mail it. <laughs>
But I just thought I'd hop on here and show you my happy bell and um, that I got from Regina. And I think she's got a giveaway going on too right now. So if y'all want to go check her out, she needs some more family members on her channel. Um, she doesn't do crochet. She knits, but she does have some giveaways and she shows yarn. Um, so... Uh, like I said, she does have a giveaway going on right now. If you guys want to show some love over there and go join her channel. Um, and she does good work on some knitting. Uh, she Kudos to those people that know how to knit. Because I have tried and I cannot. <laughs> um I can do crochet, but I think that a lot of that's because that's what I started out with. And I just, yeah, it's funny. I've got patience to do crochet, but I just do not have the patience to knit. And um, I tell you, it is kudos to those that can knit because I, I just, I just don't have the patience to do it. And to me, I'm at, I guess because I've done crocheted for so many years. I've been crocheting since 1999 that it's easy and faster for me to do that and to sit there and try to do that knitting. It's so slow going that I get frustrated with it and I, and bored, I guess, more than anything. Um, so I just, I just don't, I've tried it, I think I've tried knitting two or three times now, and I just said, okay, I, I'm done, I'm not going to try again, because it's just not for me, so, you know, I had a lady that taught me when I was in high school, like my senior year, or it might have been junior year. She taught me how to hand piece quilts. Um, I don't do that because of my eyesight. Um, as I, she literally, it was you hand sewed each piece together. Uh, now, once you got the big piece together, you use the sewing machine for the edging piece and putting the um, batting. In the back of after you get the batting on, then you sew it together with the sewing machine and you do the quilting stitch thing patterns on there with the sewing machines, which she showed me. But um, I just can't, with my eyesight, I just can't do it. Um, it's getting, it's getting worse every year. Um, I had some doctor tell me at my age it shouldn't be changing that much, but uh, he asked me, he says, so what are you doing? You know, why are you here today? I'm like, well, it's been five years since I've had an eye exam. Um, I need some new glasses. <laughs> and uh, he's like, well, it's your age. Your eyesight shouldn't be changing that much. And I was like, well, I need the new glasses frames. These things have five years old they're about to break uh, literally the bridge piece and it was metal frames like this but the bridge piece was cracking in the middle and I didn't think it was going to last a whole nother year and in order to get glasses I had to have a prescription to get a new set um, but he's like well let's see what if you got any changes or not. And. Um, well, this eye. Changed a little bit. Uh, but. When he had me cover this eye up. I couldn't read anything. On that chart. Uh, not even the largest letter. And he kind of laughed about that. But I, he's like. You're serious. I said yeah I'm serious. I know what letter it is. I said but I can't see it clearly it's very very fuzzy uh and the only reason why i knew what letter it was because i've seen it earlier with this eye um but i really could not read anything on that chart 
with this eye, even with my glasses on. Because he didn't tell me, he had me leave my glasses on the prescription that I had. And uh, anyway, me and Miss Kitty went somewhere recently. Was it last month? I think it was. Or was it earlier this month? No, I think it was last month. We went to Winter Jam uh, concert. It was a Christian concert. And we were gifted um, tickets to go. Um, she got to go because there was a family that had purchased tickets and something came up that they couldn't go. And so she got a ticket that way because it was already prepaid for and they couldn't get the money back. So they just said, just give it to somebody um, that wants to go. And so the youth leader contacted me and said, hey, we got a ticket available if she wants to go. Uh, and then just the day before the concert, she messaged me that she was sick. The youth leader herself was sick and couldn't go. There was going to be adults going already with the group, but she couldn't go because she was sick um still running a fever and stuff so she had gotten something and some of the kids were sick too but um she's like hey i can't go do you want to go with your daughter on this trip and you can have my ticket and so um and Miss Kitty's dad wasn't too thrilled with her going to that big city without one of us going with her. So he's like, yeah, I kind of would rather you go with her, especially to that area that she's going to be in. And um, so me and her got to have a day together. And that was, oh, that was just wonderful. I have never experienced a concert uh, that way before. Um, as when I was probably little man's age or somewhere between them two, uh, Miss Kitty is 15 and little man is 10. Um, so somewhere between 10 and 15, my older sisters were teenagers. Um, and there was the singer Carmen. I don't know if any of y'all know him. Um, he was a Christian singer. And the teens just absolutely loved him. And back then, he did uh, free concerts. And he took a love offering. He didn't charge a fee for tickets or anything. And every time he had his free concerts, they were packed out. I mean, and he hated to have to do it, but he eventually he had to talk, start actually doing tickets because he had so many people showing up and he had to turn people away. And he hated to do that because he wanted to reach as many teens as he could because that a lot of his concerts, a lot of teens got saved at his concerts. But the concert that I remember going to, um, I rode in the back of the station wagon and I ended up falling asleep listening to the concrete road freeway. You got those little sections you know and you driving down the road you had the kathunk, 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 kathunk noise i fell asleep on the way there listening to the car just going kathunk, 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 down the road but anyway um we were so late getting there and i'm sure there was people when they found out about that concert that they were there like first thing in the morning that day, just like we were at this other concert. That's as I was like, uh, when me and Miss Kitty went to that concert, it's a winter jam. We had to meet over at that church at nine 30 in the morning. And I'm going, 
why are we leaving so early? Because this concert, you know, it's like an hour and a half, maybe two hour drive out there to this city that we're going to. And, you know, it's not, it don't start till six o'clock p.m. Why are we leaving so early? And found out why. <laughs> While we were there, we were probably third or fourth group, um, like church group that showed up. Um, there was actually some people that had been there at the doors at that concert place at 7.45 a.m. and had been standing there that long at the very front of the doors. Um, but they got like front row, <laughs> but because we got there so early, we were third row from the stage and I had never been able to get that close to a stage before of a concert. And that was just, that was neat. Uh, very, very, very loud, <laughs> extremely loud. Um, there was one group, it was like extremely rock, um, Christian band and that, that about busted my eardrums. There was a few times I was sitting there going oh, like this cause my ears were hurting so bad. I thought I was going to bust an eardrum standing there cause they got so loud. Um, but it was just, it was, it was a very neat experience. I can tell you that. Um, cause when I went to the Carmen concert, when I was little, we got there so late that we were in the nosebleed section and you could see the stage way down there. And the guy that actually was singing, he looked like this. He looked like a little ant just dancing around on the stage. You could hear him, but he just looked like this little ant dancing around. Um, and I don't, I don't remember them have. They didn't have the big screens up like they do nowadays, where you can see, you know, people can see in the nosebleed uh, section what, you know, the actual person on stage. But um, so we were in the nosebleed section and you just had this little bitty ant just, you know, look like a little ant dancing around. Um, so, but uh, that this is how much he didn't like um, turning people away. They ran out of seats for people to sit on that was actually, you know, make part of the building seats. They took the curtains down that he had on backstage and they wheeled in a portable um, seating uh, piece and put it right behind the stage just so that those that many more people could come in and watch his concert. Um, so that's how, you know, and, and he always packed out his concerts. Um, let's see. Hi, still UV. Let's see, if we got somebody else who popped in. <laughs> Roseanne's laughing about the kathunk kathunk noise. <laughs> <laughs> falling asleep in the back of the car. <laughs> yes, I am that old. <laughs> um, some people think I'm as old as that, that, but I am. I am that old to where I remember the uh, concrete uh, freeway. <laughs> so... And I tell you, some people just don't, don't know. I used to be able to fall asleep on the school bus with all that racket going on. Um, the bus driver 
actually had banned me from sleeping in or sitting actually he had to ban me from sitting in the very back seat i don't know if y'all remember that i don't know if the buses are still that way nowadays but the back the little little back seat you know that only one person could fit in um i would get in that one and i'd go to sleep and there was a couple of times that nobody woke me up and I didn't wake up. I was that out of it. Um, that, uh, let's see, one day I woke up, I was still on the bus and actually made it to the bus driver's house. Uh, he had took the kids to school and drove home and his wife was in the kitchen and she looked out the window. She was doing dishes from breakfast. And she seen me moving. And she's like, um, I think there's either a kid or you've got a critter on your bus. <laughs> she said, I'm hoping it, that you, it, it, in a way, she says, I'm hoping that it's actually one of the kids uh, and not a critter on the bus. But he went out there and sure enough, it was me. I had fell asleep in the back seat and um, and finally had woke up. He didn't even know that I was back there. And uh, so he had to take me back to school. <laughs> I don't remember how late I was, how many classes I missed. Um, but, uh, and then the other time that I fell asleep, um, he didn't go home that time. Uh, there was a uh, little cafe restaurant downtown in the town that I grew up in. It was a very, very, very small town. You had you going from the main road and going towards the town. You had on this side of the road, you had a church. And right across from that, you go up the hill, and that was the road to go to the school. And the school was at the very top of that, that hill. But if you go past that road, there was, I think it used to be a gas station and changed over to like a little minute market thing. Um, there was the library, the cafe was there, and then there was a bank. And then you go past that and there was just nothing else. That was, oh, and a police station, sorry. Police station was in that little area with those, um, that minute market and in uh, the library and stuff. Um, so that was basically our town. Um, you blink while you're driving through there, you're going to miss it. Because that, that, that was it. <laughs> um. But anyway, he had met with some of the other bus drivers down at that little cafe. And I was asleep on the bus again. And one of the other guys seen me moving around. And he's like, um, I think you got an extra passenger uh, on your bus. And he's like, what? And he's like, yeah, I seen somebody moving. Or I thought I saw somebody moving. He come out there and sure enough, it was me. So he told me, he's like, nope, no more. You're going to sit right behind me. <laughs> so I know if you go to sleep and don't wake up. And so I couldn't sit in the back no more. <laughs> and then whenever I got older, I started helping the bus driver. I checked off the kids as, as he had this big list of all the kids. and I. To, to kind of keep me awake, I would sit there and watch the kids come on. And I, because our house, we were the second family on the bus in the mornings. And then we were the second to the last off the bus. So we had a whole hour ride both ways. So, but, um, and of course, I knew my neighbors. That was easy when they got on the bus or if they didn't ride the bus. All I had to look do is count heads 
on the bus and um you know check off who was there who wasn't there but i knew that route as good as the bus driver knew it so and uh <laughs> my best friend now she had twin brothers and they were identical twins and if one of them didn't come on the bus i'd say hey psst, which one is that one because i can't tell which one's which and i said you're her, you're their sister you, you tell me which one is which and she's like hold on just a minute she'd have them turn around and i'm like what are you doing she said, well, one of them has one crown. The other one has two crowns. And so she says, I can only tell them apart by that myself. She said, I can't tell by looking at them. Because they were that identical twins. And so anyway, she would look at the back of their head. And she'd tell me which one it was. If one of them ended up staying home. Um now, if she didn't come and one of them stayed home, I'd say, hey, psst, psst, which one of y'all? <laughs> and so, and they'd tell me which one they were, and I'd mark it on there. Cause, but, anyway, that was many, 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 many years ago. Uh, let's see. Went to public school, 7th grade, 8th grade I was going to Christian school. So 8th grade to senior, I was not riding the bus anymore. And either mom was driving us to school or my stepdad was driving us to school or I was driving us to school. So um, anyway... Haven't been on a bus for many, many years. <laughs> but, um, oh, little man, he didn't get to start riding until, was it about three years ago or so? But he was kindergarten, I think it was. Anyway, yeah, I think it was kindergarten. He got to they actually introduced the kids because not all the kids got to ride the bus and he was one of those that didn't get to ride the bus at kindergarten because i was working at that time and if i worked the later shift i would go ahead take them to school and then my sister-in-law would get them um, cause she actually worked there. She would take them home with her when she left. And so they'd ride with her, um, to her house until either me or my husband got off work to pick them up. So he didn't get the experience of riding the bus. And, um, anyway, Miss Kitty had had a few field trips, so she had the experience of riding a bus occasionally. She didn't get to, she had the same thing. Um, if I was working in a late shift, then I'd take her to school. Um, if I had morning shift, then I'd drop them off with my sister-in-law and then get them after work from her because they, they would still go home with her, but Anyway, she had already had some field trips, but to get some of the kids used to being on a bus and knowing what to do when they're on a bus, if they took a trip, um, the teacher sent me this picture of him on that bus. It was so funny as he was just like, she's, out of all the kids, he was just in awe of how big this bus was. That was his first time ever seeing a bus. And her seeing his reaction, she's like, I just got to get this on camera. 
and get a picture of this. And she took a picture and sent it to me. And she said, I just figured you would want to see that because he had the best reaction out of all the kids that she's had over the years on that bus and getting them, introducing them to uh, seeing a bus for the first time. Cause a lot of them have already rode the bus. Um, cause that's how they got to school, but because he was a car rider, there was a few others that was car riders too, but, um, I don't know if they'd already had an experience on a bus or anything, but that was his first, first time. And it's just the look on his face. She said that was just priceless. Um, so it was, and it was, I, I don't, this SD card don't have it on this phone. Um, I have it on my other SD card somewhere. Um, but just the look on his face was just absolutely priceless. Uh, he was just like, oh, this thing is huge, you know, for a little bitty thing. He was tiny for being kindergarten and, He's, he's still kind of short, um, but he'll, he'll get, he'll get there one day. <laughs> he asked me one day, he's like, mom, I'm the oldest one in my class and there's kids taller than me. Why am I so short? <laughs> I said, honey, cause that's the way God made you. I said, maybe one of these days you will get a little bit taller. I said, but if not, it's okay, too, because that's just the way God made you. <laughs> I said, but you're still little. You're still growing. I'm sure that you will get taller. And I said, probably be taller than mommy. <laughs> he just grinned. So he's kind of looking forward to that if he does get to be taller than me. <laughs> um, Miss Kitty has about half an inch of growth to get caught up with me because I'm only 5'1 and so she's just a half an inch away so she ain't got much more to go and I do believe she will be taller than me she's 15 so she's still got some growing to do uh, but anyway I don't know what else to talk about, so I guess I will catch y'all on the YT streets, I guess, and I'm going to go, if I don't go fall asleep on the couch, I'm going to go work on this shawl. So I hope y'all have a wonderful and blessed night, and the rest of the week, if I don't see y'all on the YT streets, I'm going to try to maybe do another video tomorrow. Um, because Miss Kitty is on spring break this week, so, um, the rest of this week during the daytime, um, I'll be home by myself, so, um, I'll have, take little man to the bus, and then my husband goes to work about the same time we go get him on the bus, so, it's going to be quiet this week, <laughs> which Miss Kitty's usually quiet anyway because she's doing her schoolwork. But um, I'm hoping that I can get some uh, cleaning done in the kitchen area because she won't let me clean while she's doing her schoolwork because she says, Mom, it's too distracting. You're distracting me. <coughs> so I don't usually get to do the cleaning in the kitchen until she's done with her schoolwork. <laughs> so I can actually get that done dur during the day this week. Um, and next week is going to be interesting because Miss Kitty will be back home and having to do schoolwork and little man will be on spring, spring break. So I get to keep him entertained while Miss Kitty does her schoolwork next week. Um, I'm hoping for some nice days that me and little man can go outside and maybe he can help me get my garden um ready get the dirt turned over and get some seeds planted so i'm hoping we have some good days next week because tomorrow's supposed to be rainy and i think wednesday we're supposed to have some rain in this area so 
But anyway, I'm going to hop off of here. Thank y'all for hanging out with me. Um, it's nice that you guys are chatting with me because I don't know what else I would do if you guys weren't talking to me. <laughs> so, but, and it looks like my phone battery is about to die. Yes, I only got 5% on my phone. So, I had it plugged in, but I guess it didn't, wasn't connected right. So, I guess I will see y'all later. Bye, y'all.